Fremont, California, an affluent suburb located just outside of San Francisco, and home to Spin a Yarn, a landmark restaurant that was taken over by a Greek immigrant, Saki Cavanieris. I took over in 1995, was kind of dying at the time, and gradually I brought it back to life. Hello. With Spin a Yarn booming, it seemed as if nothing could come between Saki and his dream. That is until a new addition came into the restaurant. I took the bartender job at Spin a Yarn because I was desperate. Don't drop it, whatever you do. He asked me if I had an experience, and I said yes. <gasps> but I lied. <laughs> if you would have told me I would have been married to him with a baby two years later, I would have ran for the hills. This to my wife with a straw. Bring it over your head. <laughs> Jen's just a mess when she tries to help out in the restaurant. Here you go, sweetie. Thank you so much. She doesn't know what she's doing. But she is Saki's trophy wife. I'm not as stupid as everyone thinks. And the caviar mousse, what is in that? Caviar? <laughs> I'm not book smart, I'm street smart. <laughs> when business started to slow down, Jennifer convinced Saki that a remodel might help bring the people back. I was given no budget. They don't put price tags on things. I was just told to go pick out what you like, and now I'm realizing I have expensive tastes. I was planning on spending 350000 at the most. Jennifer wound up spending almost $950,000. And after I remodeled this place, everything just went down. Yeah. That looks disgusting. The pasta is overcooked. The food isn't consistently good. It's not fresh. Have a good night. Things just kind of went like this. It is dead. It's empty. I'm stressed out, man. My dream of owning a restaurant. It's been really, really hard. You set the motherfucker on fire. Did you pay the insurance? Yeah, it's been hard on my restaurant. What are you getting me some few stuff for? Find your fucking getting you, dude. My parents will go days without talking. It's always a fight. It irritates me that I put my heart on my sleeve and... Uh, that's it, I have no energy anymore to fight with you, you know that? <sighs> my parents are on the verge of divorce. Yeah, okay. Yeah. And the main reason is because of this restaurant. I don't know how we're gonna bounce back from this. I feel like things are out of control. And I feel like we need help. After receiving an emotional letter from the owners, Chef Ramsay has decided to meet Jennifer at her home. Hi, Jen. Hi, come on in. Before heading over to the restaurant. Wow, who's that? Uh, that's me and Saki, Saki and I. What a gorgeous picture. Thank you. How long ago was that? Five years. Really? Mm -hmm. My goodness me. Good. Right, how are you? Uh, I'm nervous. You're nervous? Why are you nervous? Um, because when I asked you over, I didn't think you'd actually come. I can't believe why Oprah's sitting in my living room. Um, how did all this start? It started because I was bartending at the right. restaurant. Is that how you mm -hmm. first met? That's how we met. Saki. Okay, great. Actually, I lied to get the job. How did you manage that? He just asked if I had experience. I said yes, but he realized when I poured my first beer out of the tap that I didn't know what I was doing because it was foaming everywhere. And it was just... So he was the owner. You were obviously shaking his uh, cocktails. Yeah. Clearly, he had a soft spot instantly. He did. Did you have a soft spot for him? No. No, why? He's not someone I would typically go for or at physical appearances. The age difference between both of you is what? 16 years. People think I'm a trophy wife or I'm gold digging. It was never like that. I mean, he wooed me for eight months. We went everywhere. We went to Hawaii. We went to shows. We went to concerts. And then I realized I loved him. They say a beauty is in the eye of the beholder. It really is true. And he's my beast. Um, fast forward. Your relationship with Saki now, how's that changed? It's not doing good. So just help me understand that. It's very strange because we remodeled, we took a risk, and the remodel was, you know, a million bucks. Damn. How can you amass such a large amount? Did you know the budget? In terms I of didn't have a budget. He told me to go pick out what I like. Five. That's like sending a lady into a designer shoe store with no yeah. price tags on the shoes. 
it wasn't until after I found out that the bar was $40,000. Wow. And the little glitter tiles in the women's bathroom, I picked those out, but I didn't know they were 100 bucks each. So we can't all blame him. That's where I beat myself up and I get mad at myself because we don't own that building, we don't own that property. Saki has a 10-year lease. We've got 10 years to make it or break it. Wow. It sounds like the restaurant's under immense pressure. How do you guys talk to each other now? We don't really. That's what's the hardest part. Like, now I don't get to work with them every day side by side. So I'm trying to find my place in the restaurant. Mm -hmm. What condition is he in? I mean... The restaurant just really stresses him out because he wants to work more because he's trying to pull us out of this hole. <laughs> he is almost like ignoring the most important thing in his life, the family. Yeah. I'm grateful for the insights, let me tell you. Thank you. Thank you. OK. I feel like my marriage is at a breaking point. And that scares me. Wow. Look at that sign. What is that? A big capital S. Let's hope that doesn't stand for shit. Wow. Oh, hello. Hello. How are you? I'm Robin. How are you? Good, thank you. Good Erica. to see you. Nice Erica. to meet you. Hostess. Yep. Am I this way? How are you? Good to see you, bud. You like a little fat penguin? I know, man. Huh? I am. I God am. bless you. <laughs> Holy <laughs> crap! You look more like funeral undertakers than you do waiters. Everybody hates the work bow tie and, and tuxedo shirts. Right hand up. You look like a penguin. <laughs> Let's go. Oh, March. onto that coffin. No, you don't That's... bounce up and down. There you go. Together, together. You'll drop the body. Together, together. <laughs> oh my goodness me. Let's go. Can you show me to the table, please? Okay, I'll show Thank you your table. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Excellent. Thank you, gents. Right. I'll be your chair right here. Is Saki in? I'd love to meet him. Okay. Please, thank you. The restaurant's like old style. Can you come out here, please? Saki does need someone to push him because Saki is really old school. Hey, Chef. Hey, how are you? How are you doing? Very well, thank you. I met your lovely wife, so... Oh, nice wonderful, to... yeah. Now I understand that you went through a major renovation. Maybe you can show me around. Let's go out this way. I remodeled this place at the wrong time. And before I knew it, it was a big price tag. It was in that... it was too late to stop. Oh, really? oh dear. So these are restaurants. Oh, wow. Bloody yeah. hell. Yes. Honestly. A little stool in here as well. This is very plush. Chandelier. And then these little tiles here is $50 each. $50 each. Yeah. So you get those stunning tiles and you put these shitty butterflies on there. Yes, yeah, my wife's favorite, favorite uh, butterflies. Favorite butterflies yeah. So is she a designer? No, but she likes the good things. I let her do whatever she wanted to do it. She blames me for it. Wow. But that's how the husband and wife is, right? The husband takes the blame, whatever the wife does. Wow. The major stuff was probably right here. A uh, new fireplace. Wow, look at that marble on the bar. That's plush. Man, it's quite expensive. Yeah. Wow. So tell me about the budget. Sit down. So... Originally, it was supposed to be like $350,000. Right. You go from 350 yeah. grand to, to 950. Yeah. 600 grand over. It doesn't make yeah, sense. We got way out of hand. And the identity of the restaurant, what are we? It's seafood pasta. <laughs> seafood yeah. pasta. Continental Se cuisine. Continental cuisine. Continental cuisine. With seafood pasta. Well, uh, pasta and seafood, then. yeah. So it's a continental seafood Seafood restaurant. steakhouse. Seafood steakhouse? Yeah. Seafood steakhouse, pasta, continental restaurant. Oh, yeah. Right, let me uh, eat. I'm the one that makes the decision what goes on the menu. Victor is the chef and I'm the boss. Are you scared, Saki? Huh? I'm scared. What You're am scared, I huh? Don't worry about it. It's relaxed. You are sweating. Look at your shirt. I know I'm sweating. Why should I be sweating? That's embarrassing. I'll change your worry. shirt. Hi, Hi Gordon. You. How are you? Very well, thank you. How are you? I'm OK, thank you. Your first name is? My name is Mary. Mary, in your mind, what's wrong with the restaurants? Um, I believe the food's outdated. Oh. Chef Ramsay's going to go, ugh. <laughs> um, what do you recommend? The lamb shank is very good. Well, from what I hear, I haven't had it myself. The baked patchouli with crab and base shrimp is very good for the seafood side as well, from what I hear. But what is it, a Greek restaurant, an Italian restaurant? Well, they've always had Greek owners, so they kind of throw their Greek twist into it. Wow. 
Um, right, let's start off. Um, I'll have a wonderful Greek sound player. Mm -hmm. um, Crab Louis, please. And let's go for the filet mignon. Thank you. See you guys, the day of the judgment, Saki. You want to share the dinner? Huh. You ready, honey? Yes, please. What's your order first? Greek sampler. We used to do everything from scratch. And now they're full of sack over here. Saki, tie my hands the way things are supposed to be done. Chef Ramsey is going to see the truth. Here we go. Thank you. Wow. You're welcome. This is the Greek sampler. Look at that. That is ghastly. Has that got mashed potatoes in there? It is canned salmon caviar mixed with some mashed <coughs> potatoes. Canned? Canned. They mix it with the mashed potatoes? Mm hmm So canned, canned. Canned. A Greek tragedy. Shit. It's like a canned sampler. Whereabouts in Greece are you from? I don't know, but I'll find out for you. If he served that in the Greek Isles, they'd throw him overboard. <laughs> Thank you, darling. You're welcome. He said, if you served it in the Greek islands, they'd throw you overboard. And, and Saki, where are you from in Greece? I'm from, uh, uh, from, uh, Kalamata. Kalamata? Kalamata, yeah. Okay. And where's this crab, Louie? Yeah, He's coming, yeah. yeah. Saki is from Kalamata. Okay. So what, this is the... This is the crab, Louie. Wow. Mm, yeah. It doesn't smell that fresh. No, it doesn't. It, no. It's also um, canned. Oh, shit. Disgusting. Crab Louie was invented in this city. You think anyone serving it within a 50 mile radius would pay respect with fresh crab? Yes. How much is that on the menu for? $17.95. And that's the same with fresh or canned? Mm hmm. Wow. Okay, then. Thank you. Wow. Canned crab? Yeah, I'm surprised. I'm shocked. Is the next dish ready? What do you think of that one? So... The crab? The crab smells like fish. Like it shouldn't if it's fresh. It comes from the fish sea, tell them. Fresh frozen. Fresh frozen out of the can. How are you? Hey, how, how are, are you? you? Kind of tough, you yeah. It's hot back here. Huh? It's hot back here. Good. Ah, filet mignon. Wow. Damn. No, look at it. Looks like a mud slide. <sighs> Rubbery. <coughs> that teriyaki sauce is ghastly. It's like cough medicine. That's their way of teriyaki sauce. Thank you, darling. Mm -hmm. O-M-G. Oh, the food's gross. Said your teriyaki sucks. Everybody loves a teriyaki sauce. OK, but if he says that the food doesn't taste good, you can't no. have an excuse for it. It's not an excuse. It's a fact. We need Chef Ramsay to snap something in my stepdad to wake up, because right now, we are at rock bottom. Don't, don't comment about the food, dude. Don't comment about the food. I'm allowed to. Don't give me no advice. Just go inside, Daniel. I got enough Talk critics. Talk facts. I got enough critics. Just go inside. Why go change so crabby. There's a lot of stuff going wrong. Don't get mad at us when we're trying to help you. You guys go inside the dining room before you get pissed I'm off. I'm going to the bottom of the totem pole. It's going to be OK. Just go inside. Go follow your mom, will you? Don't get mad at me. Oh, no problem. Just follow your mom. Go follow your mom. No, 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 no. This is my restaurant just as much as it is yours. He is freaking out. After being thoroughly disappointed with less than fresh food at Spin a Yarn. Canned, canned. Canned. Damn. Chef Ramsay heads to the kitchen to have a little chat with the people responsible. Hi. Hello. Kayla, Michaela. I'm their daughter. Okay, nice to see you. Hi. <laughs> Are you uh, you working here? Yeah, tonight. Okay, great. Tonight. Well, yes. I look forward to catching up with you later. Okay. Um, <laughs> kitchen that way? Yes. Thank you. Hey, Chef. Can you um, introduce me to the team, please? Yes, come over here, please. So, Chef Victor. Chef Victor. Nice meeting you. Uh, so, you're the head chef? Yes. Okay, how long have you been the head chef? About eight years. Okay. First off, 
I'm shocked. My lunch was horrific. The first thing that arrived was the, the sample platter. Why do you get salmon caviar, mix it with cold mashed potatoes and serve it? Because that was the original recipe we have from, from here. That's the old recipe? Yeah. OK. Move on. Crab Louis salad. Why are you serving canned crab? The fresh crab is how to get the fresh crab. Oh, come on. We're in San Francisco. We're in the Bay. The filet mignon. The sauce was ghastly. It was just, it was worse than cough medicine. Like I say, just follow the recipe was here already. Oh, come on. You're the chef. Hey, what do you want me to do? Hey? Why don't you stand up for yourself? He can answer you. Are you holding him back? I don't think so. Is he holding you back? Yes. What? How do I hold you back? I mean, I don't do much things about cooking. Saki, I, I, no one's pushing for standards. You're just going through the motions like a dead man walking. Where's the passion? Say something, man. Saki, Saki. Tonight, I want to see how this place functions. Okay? You guys, uh, yeah, set up. I'll see you shortly. Yes. Damn. While the lunch was horrific, the meeting with Chef Victor and Saki was even scarier. And so Chef Ramsay is hoping to get more clarity on the workings of the restaurant tonight at dinner service. Hello, Hi, Chef. Let's have a little catch up with you. Right, Toes off. Yes, yes. OK. But just minutes before the doors open, Gordon squeezes in a meeting with Jennifer's daughter to get a better insight on the fragile situation here at Spin a Yarn. So, Michaela, how old are you? I'm 14 years old. How many nights a week do you work in the restaurant? I try to help as much as I can. If I need to be here, I'll be here. Mm -hmm. Are you aware of all the sort of arguing and oh, fighting? Oh, yeah. When they're here and they have fights, I try to say, hey, guys, let's do this somewhere else. Well, you intervene in terms of being a referee? Well, sometimes I have to act like the adult. Crazy. They will go five or four days without talking, and it scares me that my parents are on the verge of divorce. And you're caught in the middle. It's kind of like living almost like in a nightmare that you really just can't get out of. We're at rock bottom right now. And it's just it's a scary situation. OK, I'm here to help. So what well, I'm going to watch and be in the kitchen, you need me. Come and get me. OK. OK, okay thank you. Thank you, my darling. OK. We're not really a family anymore. <sighs> so I pray and hope that Chef Ramsay can bring my family back together. How are you today? You guys can come right this way, please. Have a good meal, you guys. A glass of wine with the straw, please. Um. So who expedites? Nobody expedites. I keep an eye on the, on the station. Keep an eye on the guys that run back and forth. What does Victor do? Victor is stays in the back. Victor's washing dishes? Yeah, I guess so. He's your head chef. Yes. You have no sous chef. What can I say? I don't have no help. We'd be so short hands, so we can do so much. Saki, you know, we need to spend the money. Oh. While the head chef washes dishes and the owner watches from the sidelines, entrees are making their way out to hungry diners. Bon appetito. Thank you. Thank you. But they're not exactly receiving a warm welcome from the customers. I cook better than this. Yeah. Would you like me to take it back and get you another cut? Yeah. OK, sure, definitely. <laughs> so he wanted medium rare, but this is too red for him. It's like really greasy. What's wrong with Kayla? Um, so What's wrong? This lady sent this back because the oil is like a soup. She's right. Oily and passes over coats. It's chaos right now. And the blame isn't even all on the chefs. Oh, no. Oh, you wanted it well done. It's on my stepfather, too, because he's not doing the job that he needs to be doing. Oh, no. What's wrong with that? This one's cold. Oh, for fuck's sake, okay. come on. Honestly, guys. How much food is coming back? Doesn't it bother you a little bit? I don't know what to say. I'm so tired. I don't know that. Meanwhile, the head chef is washing dishes. I don't know how I got myself into this or how we ended up here, but I blame Saki. Just 
Jen, does anyone care around here? Prime rib coming back, cold in the middle. White, anemic fat. I thought we were known for our prime rib. What do you mean? I don't need anything. I'm just trying to figure out what the fuck's going on. You guys go inside the dining room before you get pissed off. Our lack of communication. It's the death of us. What's that smell? You smell them? It's, uh... You smell them? Well, yesterday. But they're not even cold. Well, uh, they're in the cooler. <laughs> in the cooler? Yeah. Fucking hell, what's in here? Raw meat, cooked meat. Oh, dear. When were they cooked? Oh, God. What's that? Chicken or turkey? Whatever it is, it's pink and lethal. Cooked raw chicken. No date. And that's next to a fucking bowl of strawberries with mold in there. Oh, scummy fucks. You, you, and you, come with me. Stay there. Look, look at this. Explain that. I don't, maybe. I can't. I'm you, humiliated oh, right now. Oh, you can't. Why didn't you check this, dude? I mean, honestly. Hold on, it gets worse. Hold on. I thought you cleaned the refrigerator. What in the fuck is that? It looks like the padding for my bra. No, that's uh, chicken. It's raw, it's pink. Just, just smell that for me. Just smell it. Please, God, for the love of God, can you open your eyes? Dude. Hold on. That's the cooked meat. Look at this. Here's the raw meat. But it gets worse than that. Just have a look. I'm going to throw up. Congealed blood here. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. All in there. Huh? Just all sat in there. Just all sat. Huh? Just all sat in there. Jen! <sighs> Jen! Look at that. I mean, honestly. <laughs> Jen! <laughs> Where's Jen? <laughs> Jennifer? <laughs> oh, fuck. <laughs> After discovering that spinny yarn's walk-in has spun out of control... Jill blood here. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Gordon's inspection has Jennifer on the run. Jen! Jen! <laughs> oh, fuck. <sighs> Where's Jen gone? I'm right here. You're responsible for 50% of this. We're talking about losing money, staring at it. You have to take responsibility. I can't believe what this guy's guys treat the food. How the guys treat the food, but you've got to be checking, Stenosaki. Come on. I hope you have a plan, because I don't know where to start. Right now, I've got a plan. Get the fuck out of here. Unbelievable. You can point the blame, but there's no excuse for what happened tonight. In the end, for me, it falls back on Saki. He's the boss. His name is on everything. Jennifer, I bring the produce. I expect him to take care of it. OK, well, you knew Chef was coming to our fucking refrigerator. And no one fucking looked in there? Seriously? Well, the way they store the fucking them up. Just stop. No one's ever going to want to fucking come back here. <laughs> Can I just have a word with you both, please? Yes, sir. I'm disgusted. I mean, what can I say? I mean, just, I, I mean, I didn't expect to be this bad. Oh, guys. I don't know what to say, Saki. I'm, I, I, if I'd seen that before service, I wouldn't have let you cook anything tonight. Are you going to help us? Where do I start <sighs> I when everyone's know. given up? No, I'm not giving up, Chef. I have a lot to lose over here. Jen, if you're going to be involved, then get involved. If there's going to be a successful business with a successful marriage, you've got to be united. I try. <sighs> try harder. OK. <sighs> I will. I'll be a bitch if I have to. Get back in there and get that place clean. Make them respect what you bought. <sighs> Fuck it, let's gut it out. Right now, let's do it. Well, that's... Nobody goes home. Unbelievable. The last few years, the last sight of the kitchen, but I need to start fresh. I need to spend more time inside the kitchen. 
whatever happened, happened. Now, we got to start it the right way, Victor. No excuses anymore. Let's get this thing going. Let's start fresh. All right. And I shouldn't blame Victor. I shouldn't blame anybody. But the bottom line is me. It's clear to Gordon that spin yarn is destroying a marriage. Jen, how are you? Hi. Where's Saki? But ironically, this restaurant cannot be saved unless the couple is united. How are, how are you? you? Yeah. Kitchen nice and clean? We'll do our best. Really? I find it hard to gauge your best because I haven't seen it so far. There are some big issues here. Clearly, not just in the kitchen, but I think there's issues between both of you. There's no communication between you two. I'm gonna call as I see it. I just feel like I've had it, though, because he's not gonna change. I have no authority. If you don't let me make a decision, it's just as fuck, dude. It's so fucked up. You're gonna have to start manning up and understanding that you're destroying not just yourself, but your family at the same time. You're gonna have to change, buddy. You're gonna have to change rapidly. I would love nothing more than to have my wife next to me over here and work together. So why hasn't that happened? Because it's not ignorance, is it? No, I think I need to change. It's not good to have things in life and have nobody around with you to share it with. I'm gonna change myself. I'm gonna change me, okay? You have all my support. All right? I want you next to my side, okay? Yes, I love you, okay? I love you too. Uh -huh. Now that Saki and Jennifer have committed to being a team, Chef Ramsay has made some changes for tonight's dinner service. Okay, first of all, tonight, this business is gonna be run by the owners. How weird is that? You. Saki, I'm going to fall back in love with your kitchen tonight because you're expediting. OK. And tonight, we're going to do the most amazing prime rib, and we will carve table side. Tonight, this cart is going to be handled by... Jen. No. That's right. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> you. I this is your restaurant. Me, yeah? No way. Trust me. Uh-uh. Oh, I'm going to puke. What if I puke yeah, on yeah. the table? You will Seriously. not be puking on the tables. Forget that. Think of your business. You've been ignoring this business, but you want to be involved. There's only one way to get involved, and that's jumping at the deep end. Okay. I've got every confidence that you can do it. I'm feeling very nervous right now. I don't even know how to cut prime rib. Oh, I can't do this. Come in, come in, come in. Look at this. That is gnarly. Look how easy it is. <sighs> Look. Hold the knife. No, 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 look at I watch too much CSI, I can't do this. Open your eyes when you can. Oh, God. Oh, come on. Oh, well, let go of it. You don't want to grab it, grab it, that would like you. Fucking hell. Stop it. OK. Oh, my God. Please let me do this, and please don't let me gag. <sighs> For tonight's dinner service. Hello, how are you guys doing today? Chef Ramsay has added a table side prime rib. Two specials this evening. We got table side uh, prime rib. He wants to not only create excitement in what has been a morbid dining room, but he hopes to take some of the pressure off the kitchen. Okay, come on, guys, let's go. However, this plan relies on Jennifer overcoming her fears. Okay, Jen, big deep breath. Let's go. You all right? You look a bit nervous. Do you want to swap places with Michaela and I'll get her to slice it? No. No. Come on. Get it going. Jen. What? <laughs> Don't worry. It's okay. Fuck. <laughs> but I love you. All right. <laughs> oh, my God. She's freaking out because she can't handle serving fatty meat. She's going to have to deal with it. Two minutes. Where am I going? What table? Really? What am I doing? Prime rib's uh, getting cold. Let's go. Oh. Let's go, Jen. As I say in Vegas, it's showtime. This is going to be an interesting night. Who's having the prime rib tonight? You guys? Okay. <laughs> no, you can't. You can't. Oh, jeez. I'm sorry. No, come on, Jen. I've never cut meat before a chef. No, stop that. That's, forget that now. That's gone. Okay. We start again. We serve them at our best. Nothing but our best. 
He thinks I was being stupid, but I really didn't know how to cut the meat or how to handle it or what the rules were. The lights are on, but there's no one at fucking home. Oh! Can I have another bite, babe? I hate meat. Oh. There you go. Can we get the door? Every table, own it. And smile, Jen. Oh, my god. I used to like him. I don't anymore. How is everything so far tonight, guys? Good. Good? All right. Good to hear it. Oh, Jesus Christ almighty. Nicely, not like you're about to stab Saki. There you go. Come on, Jen. Oh, I just want to hide. That's Jennifer. Where are you going? <laughs> God bless America. Wow. We did a cartwheel. <laughs> Smile. <laughs> Jen. Turn around. Don't walk backwards into a door. Oh, fuck me. Okay. <gasps> Jen, what are you served out there? I can't let you do that. Control it. Dude. No, don't get all fucking into with me. My name's Gordon, not fucking Saki. I'm not yelling at you. Okay, okay? Chef, I'm trying not They deserve the best. Victor, thank and if you, you can't give them the best, then don't do it. We're getting worked up over nothing. This is how you work, and this is how you learn. And if you don't want to learn, there's no point in you doing this. Hey. Saki, how long on that prime rib? Five more minutes, honey. Thank you. I'm not going to fail, and I'm not going to cry. Brilliant, here we go. I am definitely on board. I want to do whatever it takes. I took a one second time out, I sucked it up, got my head back in the game, went back out there. Are you guys ready? I think so. <laughs> Would you like the horseradish on the side or on the meat? Do you have a preference? On the side is just fine. On the side, you got it. Okay, so there you go. Enjoy. Good, well done. Good job. Thank you. I learned a lot tonight. I learned how to cut meat. <laughs> you did good. So did you. All right. All right. Now that Saki and Jennifer have proved they are committed to this restaurant... Come through, please. Chef Ramsay has given them a new and more focused identity. Spin a yarn, steakhouse. Oh, my Don't God. Don't take a menu and pass them along, please. Thank you. Oh, God. Oh, God. No way. OK. When I first arrived, just under 200 dishes. Insane. This menu is in accordance to what you've got to work with. Easy, effective and glamorous. And playing to your strengths. Let's start off down the end. You've got a delicious sweet corn chowder. Next to that, the carpaccio. Served with onions, parmesan, arugula, and an aged balsamic vinegar. That's tight. Come to the focal point of the most amazing steakhouse. Start off with a grilled New York strip. Next to that, you've got the filet mignon. Stunning. Okay. Delicious lamb chops. We'll cook them on the rack. We won't open them up. A delicious prime rib, which was a big hit last night. Yay. The seafood. A wonderful pan-seared salmon, halibut, and scallops. Love it. And this menu is big enough for you to hit perfection. That'd be great. Now we can finally lift off of rock bottom, and it's all because of Chef. Jen, how are you feeling? I'm so happy. Excellent. Now, dig in, have a taste. Yeah? This is good, guys. Oh, my god. Mm. Try that. People are going to die to come back to eat this food. I think my customers are going to rave about it to everybody. Have you seen the new menu at Spinny Yarn? It's good. <laughs> I cannot wait to open the dinner and uh, see the reactions of the people that will be walking in. <laughs> I think they're going to be shocked. It's only minutes before relaunch night, and Chef Ramsay has an important announcement to make. And listen, I've just been told you've got half of the San Jose Sharks in for dinner tonight. Oh, that's awesome. Oh, yeah. my God. That's right. They're coming. When you see big names like that in their local restaurant, it spreads rapidly. That's the place to be in. Look after them, yeah? Have fun and sell, yes? We got to push the specials, especially the prime meal. I want my wife to work tonight. Make sure she cuts a lot of prime meal. <laughs> Let's go. Yeah, if they Let's go. all are prime meal, oh, shit It's relaunch night at Spin a Yarn. Hi, guys. Welcome to Spin a Yarn. And with the restaurant packed. I think I'm going to have the prime rib. I'll have the prime rib also. Thank you. And for you? I'll have the uh, prime rib. The customers are finding one particular menu item irresistible. I want the prime rib. 
Let's go, Victor. Let's go. We move the plate. Let's do it. Table 12. Table 42 is coming. And the crab cakes and the calamari and the other. It's coming, yeah. OK. Excellent. Now we're moving. Saki, we've been together so long, and I, hey, see Saki like this. It's made you motivated to do a better job right there behind the line. Come on, let's move it. With Saki expediting and supporting his head chef, the first appetizers are making their way out to the dining room. Wow. Here you go. Enjoy, you guys. And, this is the 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 and the dishes are a hit. So are you going to share them? <laughs> Oh, here she is. Stand by. Here's the dolly with the trolley. OK, <laughs> cart's arriving. Look at that prime rib, everybody. Wow. To die for. Who's having the prime rib? I'll have it medium. OK. Excellent. Hold on tight to that knife. We slice somebody's ear off. It's like huge pieces. Okay. There you are, miss. Enjoy. Thanks. You bet. I'm really surprised. It's like the size of a door. A little bit thinner next time. We're here to make money, not lose it. All right, you're the lucky one. <laughs> I'm going to give you a great piece of the meat. Wow, today's your lucky day. Prime rib yes. for four. Oh. Jen, you don't have to give away half the fucking prime rib. With Jennifer continuing to carve big portions, <laughs> and the San Jose sharks arriving, the prime rib is running dangerously low. Did you see the sharks? What? <sighs> sorry, sorry. The sharks are swimming closer. Let's go. Hello, sharks. How are you doing? I'm doing good. It took me a long time to come over and build up the courage to come over here and ask you, please don't order the prime rib. But I'm totally joking. Okay. <laughs> I need that ticket in here. It's a big one. Like burger? Should we all get prime rib? No. I'm probably going burger. I haven't had prime rib. Prime rib? You have the order? All prime ribs. Easy. So how many's left? All of this. Oh, for fuck's sake. You are kidding me. I messed up. That's all, it's a big ticket. Oh, boy. See, they're all having prime rib. If you run out now, I'm going to flip my lid. It's relaunch night at Spin a Yarn. And with Jennifer carving massive portions, the kitchen is running out of prime rib. So how many's left? All of this? Oh, for fuck's sake. And with the dining room full of hungry sharks, the kitchen is at a complete standstill. If you run out now, I'm going to flip my lid. Victor. Yes. You have enough for 12, right? Ah. Uh, oh, my God. Ah, uh, boy. Give me a prime rib. You have a prime rib there? Uh, oh, come on. I got one more. He had one up his sleeve. Victor, well done. I cook another one on my own, so we are an emergency. God bless America. Beautiful. Look at that. OK, let's go. Here we go. Sharks now, yes? Work in harmony. Are you coming behind me with 12? I'm coming right behind you. With head chef Victor coming through to save the day, Jennifer and Saki now work as a team to serve the San Jose Sharks. Is that too rare? OK. It's exquisite. Holy moly. <laughs> that was hard. You did a great job. <laughs> Jennifer had a lot of confidence in them. She didn't give up, that's for sure. Even though we had all these orders of prime meat, she got a little nervous, but came out to be good. How was your meal, guys? Oh, Thanks for coming. Yeah. Hope you enjoyed it, huh? Yeah. Hope it was big enough. Yeah, was <laughs> this is for you. Oh, wonderful. Yeah. Thank you, guys. You're the best. Thank Can you. we take a picture? Sweet. That's nice. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Yes, I wanted to have you guys see again. That's my man. <laughs> I'm really proud of Saki. To have a successful restaurant feels surreal. It's so great to have the support of the community, and it feels good to be back on top. Real nice having you guys. Good luck. Have a great season, huh? It's been a crazy week. Let me tell you. The difference from the start of the week to the end of the week has been night and day. The most important thing is the three of you. Like that, one little unit. All actively involved in the business, hands on. Jen? It felt tonight that you were handling that trolley for the last five years. Thank you. I feel like I finally have a role in this restaurant, and I never thought it would be the queen of cutting. <laughs> well done. Thank you. And you, honestly, you've got one bright future, let me tell you. Thank you. Saki. Yes, sir. To see you falling back in love with your business is exemplary. You must not stop. You made us proud for our place. <sighs> Chef Reggie gave me new confidence to keep going again. I was kind of burned out with financially and everything, but now I think the future looks good. Well done. All right. Thank you. Well done. Look after your family. Thank you very much. Stay together. You got it. Yes? Thank you. Thank you, Chef. I'm telling you. 14. Wow. I'm so grateful for Chef Ramsey. He saved our lives. He changed our lives. 
And you, keep pushing that trolley. <laughs> and stop being so nervous with it. OK. I'm just so grateful for the opportunity to turn things around and start a new future for my family. Good job. <laughs> Great job. Good night. Have a nice trip. Thank you, Chef. Thank you. And he's off like a ship in the night. <sighs> wow. Let me spin a yarn for you. Tonight, Jen proved that she's not a trophy wife. And she has gone from a spectator to a force with a trolley. But tonight, she's not the only one because it's all about a team effort. And that's exactly what this restaurant needs to succeed. Teamwork. Wow, 80 grand on a bathroom. Holy crap. In the weeks that followed, the new menu featuring the amazing prime rib. OK, who are the lucky recipients? Continue to attract new customers from the Bay Area. We're falling behind, OK? OK, you know what, Saki? And while Jennifer and Saki's relationship still has its quirks. Kiss my up. ass. <laughs> they're both actually enjoying working together to make Spin -a Yarn the place to be once again. I love working with Saki and um, communicating. And it feels good to do things right. It feels great. Laverne, California, just 30 miles from Los Angeles. This suburb is home to a neighborhood Italian bistro called Charlie's. And in 2010, it was bought by the Leva family. Would you like a booth? I started working here 10 years ago. I was a waitress here. And then I had the opportunity to take it over, but I didn't have the money or the collateral, so I had to go to my mom and my sister. Pat and Val, both full-time school teachers, finance the restaurant and put their houses up as collateral to help Tatiana fulfill her dream. My mom and I don't know about the restaurant business, and so we put a lot of trust in my sister's experience to run the restaurant. Tati, are we going to have enough bread for tonight? Of course. When I took over the restaurant, I didn't want to change the menu or the chef. I just wanted to keep it as is because I love this restaurant. How are we doing? That's not good but it didn't pan out the way I wanted it to. I mean, I could sit here all day and have maybe four tables at the most. How many tables did you have, Jen? I only had one. That doesn't even pay for the cost of just running electricity. Who's going to bring the people in? I don't know. The problem with the restaurant is Tatiana. The fact that she feels like she doesn't have to change things, it's ridiculous. They don't like this term of zoo. They're crazy. The best term of zoo is a couple of The food, um, oh, it's disgusting. Casimero is our head chef. He's been here for 14 years, and he's pretty awful. It's not good. It's a little chewy on that shit. Basically, the restaurant's suffering for it. Do we have any tables that are happy? When Tatiana manages the restaurant, usually that consists of standing around with a glass of wine in her hand. All right. She's very disrespectful. You're talking out of your ass. Rude. Stop it. I told you. Most people end up crying. Don't you dare. <laughs> I need a drink. Tatiana doesn't know how to handle being an owner. Don't drink so much, OK? My mom and my sister already resent me for asking them to put their houses on the line. I don't know how we're going to make it this month. They play the blame game. This is Tatiana's fault. We wouldn't be in this mess if it wasn't for Tatiana. But they didn't put a gun to their head. What are we going to do now? <sighs> if we don't get more customers, we would lose our houses. It is very serious. I really need Chef Ramsey's help. Oh, I'm scared what's going to happen. I just don't understand, like, what else I could do. A rare rainy day in California. What better way to pick you up than a nice lunch? Right, Charlie's Italian food. Oh. Hi. 
when Chef walked in, I just laughed. Because <laughs> that's what, I, I don't know what to do with this nervous energy and this anxiety. How are you? Oh my gosh. <laughs> and this is? Tatiana. Tatiana. Yeah. Is, uh, is Charlie in? No, he's not. OK. The restaurant's called Charlie. Who is he? Charlie was the original owner. Charlie owned it. Charlie owned it. So there's no Charlie? No, no. I used to work here as a waitress um, oh, okay. when right. Charlie owned okay. it. And then he sold it to another person named Simon. OK, great. And then when Simon ran this into the ground, he dumped it. Simon bought it off Charlie mm -hmm. and then dumped it on you. Just dumped it in general. And then I took it over because I loved this restaurant. We took it over. My mom and my sister. Oh, is it? Yeah. Caprice, hello. I'm Val. Val, nice to see you, darling. Nice to meet you. And this is? I'm Pat. Pat, nice to see you, my darling. Um, why don't you come over, Val and Mum? It'd be nice to catch up and get up to speed with what's happening. Right. Where can we go somewhere uh, We can go outside quiet? if you'd like. Shall we? Let's yeah. go outside. Yeah. Excellent. Tatiana needs to learn effective ways of doing things around here. So, um, first of all, it's so important that I catch up with what's been happening. Whose idea was this, to run a restaurant? Her dream. I love this restaurant. I've worked here since I was 20 years old. I know, but working in a business to running a business completely two different uh, scenarios. Yeah, it's completely different. Two, OK. How much money did you need to get on the table before you took over? Mom put all her retirement money into it. Really? I put all that to that, you know, the house. And her house. My condo, yeah. So as the restaurant goes, your houses go. Wow. Um, and how much money did you put in? Um, probably like a 1000 bucks. Okay, financially, where are we? The restaurant's in debt at this point. Anyone That's not good. And who makes the decisions here? Tatiana. Well, they have other jobs as well. So you have a full-time job and you come in here to run the restaurant? Right. Wow. So what's gone wrong then? I don't know. You don't know? Wow. So then what's the changes you made when you bought it? Nothing changed. Okay. So. Simon ran it in a bad way, didn't give a shit about the customers, and it was appallingly led. But you haven't changed anything. That's been a major issue. Help me understand, because I'm confused. The risk is little on your side, yet mammoth for you. And yet, you're not even in control of the business. Right. Wow. I just don't know what I've done so wrong. Like, I don't know. Uh, I think we've seen a much clearer, uglier side of her. This is the thing. I don't think they trust me or they... Well, you brought them into a mess. But what it comes down to is that she does not treat us as equals. Don't even start. You talk yeah. down to me, you bulldoze me, you do not treat me like an equal. Yeah. You don't treat me like one third of this restaurant. Well, I have the burden of the money and I'm making $2 an hour. She gets paid that much, but she also gets a car. She gets her cell phone paid for, her gas. Wow. OK. So, if you could get out of this, would you do it? Looking back, we did make a very, you know, risky and stupid decision. My sister doesn't have that burden of losing her house, so she's never been really responsible. Listen, I'm back to eat. Nice to meet you, all three of you, and I'm going to see what I've got to work with. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. It's emotionally draining, and it's a scary situation. Here we go. Have my lunch. Here's some water for you. Thank you very much. My name is Genevieve, and I'm going to be your server. Can okay. I get you started with anything? Let's go. Um, right, let's start off with the toasted ravioli. Okay. The uh, frutta de mare. Okay. Uh, the lasagna. It's not your typical lasagna, so be prepared for something different. Which means something different. It's. Do, 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 save it, save it, save it. Are you sure? Absolutely. All right. And we're in California, so why not um, chicken pizza? Okay. Excellent. And who makes the bread? Uh, Casimiro, our head mm -hmm. chef. Yes. Ready? Thank you. Bread's dreadful. The dough ball. Wet, soggy, horrible dough. Damn. Do it, Casimero. Toasted ravioli for the chef Ramsey. Sí. I don't like any of the food, so I really don't think that he will either. Oh. Here's the toasted ravioli. Thank you very much. Wow, 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 wow. Which bit's the toasted bit? Yeah, I, I never rec have recommended the ravioli. I mean, they're raw. 
Yeah, a lot of people don't like that. They're either really raw or they're just like cardboard. She doesn't know what she's talking about. I mean, they're dangerous. Does she eat them? Tatiana, does she eat that dish? No. No, will you ask her to taste one for me? Okay. And then I think she'll 86 them. Alright. Toasted ravioli, really? Yeah, sounds like the owners are toast. He said taste it and agree with him and 86 it. I can't take food back there. None of us can take food back there. That's not how it's supposed to go. You're supposed to go straight to the chef and say, this is wrong. Wow. This is the fruit de la mare. Fruit de la mare. Yes. Wow. It's a bizarre looking fruit de la mare. OK, great. Thank you, my darling. Pasta's mush. It's way overcooked. Strands of mozzarella. Is that mozzarella on top of it? Yes, it is. On a fruit de mare. And then the pasta. It's just mush. So it's almost like it's canned. And the mussels taste uh, like old stout. Are they fresh mussels? I don't no. think so. And the shrimps. These ones are way overcooked. And Those ones, ones are grey. Strange. Yeah. This has been going on for like a month or two now. He's just been thinning out bad shrimp, and we don't know why. Genevieve doesn't shut up. And do you not tell the chef? <laughs> Well, I can't take complaints to the chef. Seriously? Um, Tatiana doesn't really listen to any of us. <laughs> wow, not good. What the hell is that? What it's is the that? lasagna. That's the lasagna? The lasagna is vile. It's embarrassing to serve that to Chef Ramsay. What's in the sauce? Why is it that color? It's pink sauce. She doesn't know what's in it. Pink sauce with lasagna. Is it his own recipe? Yes, it is. The sauce tastes bizarre. And the um, mouthful I had was um, stone cold. It's hot one side, cold the other. Is that microwaved? It might be. Don't don't answer a question you don't know. Oh. Wow. <laughs> right. Um, is there a problem with these microwave? Not that I'm aware no. of. It feels like the microwave's on the blink. Yes, it is. Wow. When a restaurant can't get food microwaved properly, by all time low. Let me answer these questions. Still, there's always hope for the pizza, especially when you look at nothing like that. All right, maybe we can win him over with the pizza. It's crispy, isn't it? No. It's oh, como bien. It's pizza, it's good, it's good. Si, pero no es como menos cocido. You want it? Oh, here's my pizza. Now, this is this the garlic chicken? Oh, God, I hope he likes something. Oof. Doughy. So bready, so doughy, and got all this raw pastry underneath there. Oh, no, he doesn't like the pizza. It resembles nothing homemade. Oh, my god. We've got a pizza that's come out of the oven. That feels like something that's been frozen. He hates our pizza. He hates our pizza. What a shame. <laughs> oh, dear. Is it, is it that bad, Chef? Uh, yeah, it's not funny. Uh, I don't know what the giggles and the laughing is about, but the dishes have been dreadful. OK. I'm trying not to cry, but he's going to come after me. I can feel it. Oh, my god. We seriously have a kitchen here. After a lunch in which every dish had a failing grade, it's hot one side, cold the other. Dreadful. Owner Tatiana refused to pass on any of Chef Ramsay's criticism. This is um, Chef Casimiro. Casimiro, how are you? The head chef. Excellent. And first name? Daniela. Daniela, good to see you. But the uninformed kitchen crew is about to be enlightened. So just explain, um, who's the head chef, please? Casimiro. Do you speak a little English, Casimiro? No. No. And I, uh, I'm upset. I mean, you have a really bad, depressing restaurant. But this place is a mess. And you know what? It's not even mediocre. The food is hideous. You don't need me to tell you that. For bread, that's the kind of bread that you're serving. Touch it. It's soaking wet, it's bland, and it's a 1,000 miles away from anything called focaccia, let me tell you. It's embarrassing. Pink lasagna, stone cold in the center, piping hot on the right-hand side. Disgusting. I just, I trust them so much. I trust him. I you're let, him, I let him do it. You I just trust let him do them? it. I just trusted him to, 
to know what he was doing because he's been doing it for so long. No, the problem is he's got away with it for so long. Fruit de Mare with the overcooked linguine in a seafood dish. No salt, the shrimps solid like a bullet, and mussels that didn't even taste fresh. Where are the mussels from? Sure. Show me. I mean, come on. What a mess. I mean, well, what? What else do you freeze? I don't know. You want to come see? Yeah. All right. Yeah, well, if you don't know, let's find out. What is it that? You freeze meatballs? When were these made? We buy them. You buy meatballs? He can't make a meatball? He can make a meatball, he doesn't want to. No, quieres hacer meatballs? Oh, wow. Can you make a meatball? Yeah. My hands are tied in this kitchen. I don't have any input on what goes on. Tatiana should step up to the plate and she should know what's going on in the kitchen. That's her job. What is that? Noodles. Noodles. What's the chef expecting? A rush on pasta? Wow. How much pasta does one chef need? He's obsessed with it. It's all, all overcooked. What's in this one? Pizza dough. Holy crap. This is just for the pizza, not the bread. Not the bread. And this dough here? Same thing. Small and large. Small and large. Small and large. Look at this one, then. My god. What the fuck? This is what goes on daily. All that bread like this and all that pasta. Wow. What's he doing with all this stuff? There's not enough time to prepare everything with everything he has to prepare in the day. So what happens when he doesn't sell this? Where does it go? Throw it away. He throws it away. How much do we throw away? There are times where we've thrown away a lot of pasta because people aren't ordering it. Paddy and Val, this is your house. This is you. This is your life right here in the trash. Tatiana, what I'm more concerned about is the fact that you're oblivious. You're like an airhead that's got her head in the clouds. This is business. It was a unsuccessful business before. You picked it up and maintained that unsuccessful menu in an unsuccessful business. You come in, change nothing. You can't direct any form of criticism or standards to your chefs. I don't even know why you bought the place. And I certainly wouldn't pull my sister down and bring my parents into it to facilitate your ego dream. Don't you understand? Like, I look at my mother and I feel horrible. I feel horrible that I Excuse said this me. to her. Don't start looking for sympathy now. Who I'm wanted this place? Sympathy, but I'm I sorry. It wasn't your mother's dream. It certainly wasn't Val's dream. Or am I wrong? No, it was Tati's dream. Tati's dream, which has now come back to bite you on the ass. What hurts me is not how you feel. It's what's going to happen to them if this doesn't work. House gone, house gone. What are you going to do? I don't know, Gordon. I don't know. But why did you do it? Because I, I thought I could make it successful because I believed in myself. What, and not make changes? What the hell were you thinking? Where are you going? Wow. What a joke. I resent my sister for putting me in this position. She needs to be knocked off her high horse. And now Chef Ramsay's making her really see that she does not know it all. It's like, I just feel completely alone and worthless. And I don't know what to do. <sighs> night one is usually an observation night for Chef Ramsay. But things are so bad here at Charlie's. Chef. I'll be two seconds, OK? He decides to make one change right away. Casemiro, Daniela. OK, we're going to make homemade meatballs. I want you to make me a meatball, and I want you to make me a meatball. I'd like to taste yours. I'd like to taste yours. I'll be back later, yeah?
Casimiro shouldn't have a problem with since he's worked in an Italian restaurant for 15 years. And watching Casimiro in, like, I cringe because he doesn't know what he's doing. How are you? So, what did you do? You didn't fry them off? He's not even frying them off, he's just boiling them in sauce. Tatiana, when you make a meatball, you have a pan, frying pan, you soak the meat and you finish it off in sauce. You don't know that? No. 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 What seasoning you put in there? There's just nothing in there. It's just like boiled meatballs. Look at them. It's like cat food. How are you cooking yours? I was saying that. Okay, good. Let me have a little taste of that. Bring it out. Oh, it's nice. Mm. Lovely. Soft. Yeah. Crumbly. Delicious. I'm going to use them tonight. They're going on the menu tonight. No me gusta eso. Fucking hell. You're the sous chef. You should be the fucking head chef. T Tatiana. I get nervous when a chef can't even make a meatball. I mean, honestly. And this young lady's flavor of her meatball is 10 times greater. Casimir couldn't make a meatball correctly, but I don't think he is a bad cook. Necesitamos enseñarlo en this. Tú eres bueno. Casimir, you're bueno. Be strong. Be strong. As dinner service begins... Hi, guys. Welcome to Charlie's. Table for six. Our specialty tonight is spaghetti and meatballs. Chef Ramsay is giving a tutorial on meatballs in an Italian restaurant. They've got to have a color on there that adds richness and a nice deep flavor. OK. And are we ready to order, or do we need a minute? Mm -hmm. OK. Shrimp pilaf. Shrimp pilaf. Primero, much shrimp pilaf, spaghetti bolognese, fruta de mare y alfredo con pollo. Okay, we have this spaghetti con meatballs, spinach ravioli. Okay. You all right, Danny? Yeah, he just says he wants to work slowly. He wants to work slowly? Why? I Can think you ask he just wants to focus on one ticket at a time. I don't think customers want to hear the chef say, I want to work slowly. Olvídalo. I try to say something, Casimiro, about ticket times. He will just ignore me. Casimiro? Okay. What ticket is he working on now, darling? He's working on the... Uh, He's working what? on this one. Right, okay. I haven't even gotten to those. Are you kidding me? No, no, no. With Casimiro working at his own pace, no, no, voy a trabajar rápido, okay. the dining room's patience is so hungry. It's being tested. Yeah, we just... I'm diabetic. I can't wait any longer. Okay, I'm sorry. Oh my God. platos. As food finally makes its way into the dining room. I am sorry, guys. Spaghetti with meatballs. It is finally. Customers find out. I think the pasta is a little overcooked. It's a it was definitely not worth the wait. It tastes more like Chinese food than uh, Italian food. It's more like Chinese food. Spinach ravioli mas cocido. What have you done? What the fuck have you done? Stop. No, 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 listen, you fucking donkey. Danielle, come here. I want you to stop. What are you doing? Oh, no, come on. He said he was working and he couldn't watch him. Oh, come on. I know. Get me Tatiana, please. Please, darling. Is it not cooked? They're all kind of on one side. Where's Tatiana? She's dealing. They're complaining about the meat. We need her now. We need her now. No! Chef needs you now. Chef, I'm having complaints about the meatballs. Yeah, yeah, L listen, listen. But put that down. I've got a fucking bigger. No, I didn't say throw it away. Come on, sweetheart. I showed him how to cook one off. My back's turned to two minutes, and that's what I've got. Burnt shit stuck to a pan. He turned around to Danielle, hold on, and said to Danielle, I've got, uh, I'm busy. I can't watch my meatballs. That's what I'm going to work for. What's your complaint on the meatballs? They said it was, like, toasted on one side but not toasted on the other. Really? How about telling your fucking chef? OK, you go ahead. Now he's getting upset with me because I've caught him out. When a guy can't make a meatball or even season one, I'm sorry. I'm really sorry. And then when I watch a chef that cooks and sticks food up there, holds it, and we're not even talking homemade food, we're talking bought-in, store-bought. My God, it hurts. OK, you cook it. No, 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 no. And look at that for a stinking attitude. 
Look at that. A disgusting attitude. Ask him to put his house in the fucking mix. If his house was on the line, he wouldn't be cooking like a fucking idiot. <laughs> now he thinks it's funny. You think it's funny? Yeah. It's a joke. What does he want to do? He doesn't want to cook. He doesn't want to cook. Get your head out of your ass. Do we have any more spaghetti and meatballs? Do we have any more meatballs? Do we have any more spaghetti and meatballs? Or... What's it? I feel like I don't know what I'm doing here. Maybe I have no idea how to run a restaurant. Maybe I don't. Tatiana, you're not just responsible I'm for so the dining I'm so You're responsible for the whole thing. I'm sorry, but the whole thing. Because I had him on a pedestal. Come outside. <laughs> what are you doing? I don't know. I just thought he was something better than what you're Open showing your me. Open your eyes. I've I never seen did. anything so ridiculous. I know that. And to stand there with his arms folded and give me shit on the back of screwing up something that I went out and bought half an hour before we opened, so trying to install a little he bit of passion. He just kept telling me, like, I just don't have enough time. He cooks one dish at a time. A six top, and the other dish, you just sit there. And you're scared of that? Where the fuck do we go? I've been his friend for 10 years. I know it's I'm family. I'm sorry. It's well, kids. OK, it's great. Kids. He's got kids, and so does your sister. <laughs> it's your fucking business. Come on. Honestly, Italian cafe. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> After Casimiro ruined the meatballs, what the fuck have you done? And has now refused to cook. Basta cocinar? No. Chef Ramsay is frustrated, not Excuse only me. by the chef, but also by Tatiana's lack of management. I've been his friend for 10 years. I know it's I'm family. sorry. Well, it's okay, kids. great. It's He's got kids, and so does your sister. It's your fucking business. Come on. Honestly, Italian cafe. Wow, what a joke. <laughs> Chef, don't leave. Please don't leave. I don't know what to do. It's I'm... my fault. I just, it's, I, all I, my fault. It, it, it's just insane. No restaurant anywhere in this country functions like that. Just help us because I can't, I can't have it fail. No vas a ayudar me? What's it? When a chef outlasts two owners already, trust me, there's something not quite right. Because if the owner previously, i.e., Charlie, was that fucking invested in his chef, trust me, he would have gone with him. him. He would have gone with him. It's not rocket science, Tatiana. And you're a smart girl. How could I have not have seen this? Well, you're scared to upset somebody. Yet you're happy to see all three family members homeless. But they rely on you to manage the restaurant. They depend on you to give them that security. I feel. Not some chef that won't even take on board what you're trying to say. Stand in there for five minutes, just watch what they do. That's if he's, you know, happy to cook again. So I need to fire him. I'm not asking you to fire him. I'm asking you to take responsibility. I'm so embarrassed by the restaurant in general, and it's all my fault. And I'm the only one to blame because I'm the owner, and I'm doing such a horrible job. Put all your orders in. We're closed. Put them in. I want to close. I guess I just have been walking around with like a sheet over my face and not seeing these little things that are so easy to see. Val, Mom, I need to talk to you now. You need to go outside. Okay. I'm mad at myself. I need to be the owner of this restaurant. We have to fire Casper. OK. All the mistakes that he's made tonight. He doesn't take any direction. He's giving chef attitude. He's, he's the problem. Can't even make a meatball. The only thing that I think is right this hard. Okay. And I need time to out. Oh, then you need time. I need to do it. Hi, everyone. Have a good
a good night. Amber, get out of the kitchen. Casimiro, Marvel. Necesitamos hablar. Sí, dime. ¿Qué pasó, amiga? Casimiro, yo pienso que los dos necesitan ir. Este me duele mucho, ¿ok? Está bien. Lo siento mucho. Lo siento mucho, Casimiro. Está bien. No, 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 After finally understanding what her chef was really doing to her restaurant, ¿Vas a cocinar? No. Los dos necesitan ir. Tatiana makes her first big change since becoming an owner. Uh, I think she's crying in the bathroom. Tatiana let Casimiro go. Okay. Okay. Listen, I know it's hard. Yeah, but yeah, I'm here. I'm here to support you. Okay. Okay, we've got two seconds. Let's have a quick word. Okay. Please. Val. Thanks. Sir. Honestly, I think the lie went on for you. I think you sort of yeah. woke up and started making some tough decisions. I don't think you've ever done that since you bought this place. Tomorrow's a new day. And, you know, I've got ideas, let me tell you. OK, good night. After one of the most difficult days he has ever had on Kitchen Nightmares, Chef Ramsay is now completely focused on rebuilding Charlie's. Today's about moving forward. What we haven't got is somebody at the helm. We need a leader, like any good kitchen. I'd like to introduce you to someone who's pretty unique. Jonathan, come through, please. Oh, my God. Good to see you, bud. Chef, how you doing? Very well indeed, thank you. Now, this man knows how to put restaurants on the map. More importantly, he's been working with me for the last three years. He's opened four restaurants for the last five years. You've got him for the month. I am thrilled. We have a chef. It's like Christmas morning. <laughs> I'm so excited. Jonathan also comes with an assistant to make sure that we get this going. Oh, my God! Not only will he get this place consistent, he'll help find a young chef, train a young chef, and Tatiana, if there's one person you need to get close to, right now is this man. Come here, come here. <laughs> I'm really happy. Get everything set up for you guys and get you guys off the races, eh? This is definitely the beginning of a new Charlie's. Hair up, grab an apron, let's go. Now with the new chefs in place. Let's go, Tatiana. Okay. Gordon knows it's critical that Tatiana is familiar with the inner workings of the kitchen. So just go maybe right to the, just to the right of it, right in the middle there. Perfect. Right. When was the last time you made a lasagna? I've never made a lasagna. I've never made lasagna, ever. That's crazy. Let's start off with mixing. Take your white sauce, nice and clean, with your plastic scraper. Good. Get close to it. You've got nothing to be intimidated by. Absolutely. I need to learn what needs to happen in a kitchen and how it functions. That's it. Good. Again, take your time. More. Pasta. There's nothing complicated. I'm going to learn this restaurant from scratch. I want to take the baby steps and get better. Pretty much neck and neck. Well done. OK. okay. In the oven. 25 minutes. I don't know why I thought I couldn't do it. It is not difficult, I'm telling you. So you guys just made pizzas. Doesn't that look amazing? Yeah. Can you give me I feel like I can do anything. Dig in. I just can't wait to get to work and prove to my mom and my sister that I can do this. I think the message is clear. 
Nobody's scared mm. to walk through that door yeah. and get their hands dirty in that kitchen. No, we're not. Tomorrow is a big day, let me tell you. I need everyone on their game. Good night, guys. Get some sleep. Thanks. Thank, Thank you very chef. much, chefs. Oh, my God. <laughs> Last night, Tatiana and her team eagerly learned a few of the new recipes. Good morning. Now Chef Ramsay is ready to unveil an entirely revamped menu. Here we are. Please take a copy of the menu and pass it along, please. Oh, my God. Uh, first of all, we have a dynamic, simple, clean menu, right? Now, let's start off with a homemade focaccia bread. Oh. Yeah. Seasoned with rosemary and garlic, drizzled in olive oil. Salads. We have the chopped salad. In there, you've got garbanzo beans, provolone cheese, salami, finished with some fresh and mouthy lemon. So it's got that really nice oomph to it as well. Entrees, pan seared salmon served with a white bean ragu. Phenomenal. Absolutely delicious. Next to that, we've got something that's a staple spaghetti meatballs. Absolutely delicious. And then finally, pizzas, four of them margarita, prosciutto, zucchini, done with the shrimp and the meat lovers. Mm. And again, we have a massive asset there in that pizza oven, and we're going to take advantage of that. Right, thing. right. Yeah? Dig in. Let's oh go. Oh my gosh. This is so beautiful. Mm. Mm. Oh my god. I am thrilled. This is amazing. This is like the menu of my dream. Oh my god. The pizzas are incredible. Mm. Oh my god. I love that. I know. I am excited for the new menu. I mean, it's beautiful. It's delicious. Chef Ramsay, you're my boy, dude. It's relaunch night as Charlie's opens its doors for dinner. Welcome to Charlie's. And the town of Laverne is anxious to give it another try. We'll go to the zucchini pizza. I'm going to have the panini. So I'll put that right in. And with Chef Jonathan and Chef Peter running the kitchen. We got two fried calamari coming right now. It's up to Tatiana to make sure the rest of the team are up to the task. My name is Tatiana. I'm the owner. If you need anything, please let me know. Calamari go out on P1. The calamari is in there right now. Val. This order's up. It's a tomato soup, the Caesar salad. Order up, fried calamari. With the kitchen staff working together, food quickly makes its way to the diners. Tomato soup, did you guys order some calamari? Yes. But not all the customers are receiving their meals. You guys, your food's not even here yet. My yeah, I was gone. kind of open to show up at the same time. I have a question. Yes. Um, that was my entree, my dinner? Yes. And I know. It tasted great, but... It's the only thing that's out here. I know. I'm done eating, and they don't have no food. I'm going to go ask the kitchen right now? Yes, All right. Please. Nice, thank you. Pizza came out. The entrees haven't come out. Did they come all in as entrees? Yes. I'm trying not to cry, but this is really bad. Why are you guys not talking to each other? Why are you not talking to the chef, you guys? It's a nightmare. Danya. Yes, Chef. How many pizzas we got on there? Two margaritas and a meat lover, Chef. So you've got two margaritas and meat lovers on there. You've got three pizzas on, yeah? Yeah, I already did them, yes. Yeah, they're already gone. Fuck me. And it soon becomes apparent that there's a detrimental lack of communication between the wait staff and the pizza station. And I don't know if the meal has come out for this yet. Before you send a pizza, you've got to check in with Jonathan. You're sending your pizza in your own little world. We've got to stick together, guys. You have to talk to him. Yes, Chef. They need to communicate. I'm telling them, Chef. I don't know what to do now. It's relaunch night at Charlie's. And with some of the tables receiving incomplete orders. I'm done eating, and they don't have no food. A night that started off with so much promise is on the brink of disaster. They need to communicate. I'm telling them, Chef. They need to communicate. I don't know what to do now. I feel overwhelmed. I'm having a moment of, like, maybe I'm not cut out for this. Come here a minute. Come here a minute. We're going to go down in history as the biggest fucking shithole in the van. You need to step up. I am stepping up, Chef, no, but, but I'm only one person. Nobody listens to me. Tomorrow, we're going to be fucking closed at this rate. Get them together and wake them up. Come on, please. This is ultimately my restaurant. I am the captain of the ship. Just come over here now. And I'm not going to give up. Audrey, over here now. Come here. Why are you guys not talking to each other? Why are you not talking to the chef, you guys? He talks. He's not Casimiro. Talk to him. If you don't know what's going on, talk to me. If you need help, ask somebody, OK? All right, get it? Yes. Get back to your tables. I can't do this alone. OK, the prosciutto pizza for Audrey on Cameo 7? Yes, I'm going to cook it right now. Yes. OK, I'm leaving them here. Leaving them here. With Tatiana stepping up and organizing her staff. Talk to each other. Jen, you're, you're walking around. 
everyone is now in sync. Is it almost ready for the prosciutto? The prosciutto is ready. Yeah. Let's do this. Me lovers. And entrees are quickly making their way out to the tables together. And here's pizza. Oh my God. I need to take knives. This is the best lasagna I've ever had. You okay? I love your oh gosh, it's so good. I know. It's so good. The customers are totally loving everything. They're happy. They're enjoying it. And I'm proud of this restaurant now. I'm proud of it. Thank you so much. You're very welcome. All tickets are gone. Tatiana has finally stepped up, and I am so proud to say that she's my boss. Give me five. Thank you for coming. Come back and see us. Oh, gosh, thank you. Listen, tough night. It wasn't expecting to be a perfect night, let me tell you. But trust me, overall, it was successful. Customers love the food. And what you did get an insight tonight, too, was the, the, the potential of this place. We can't give up. The foundation's here. Run with it. Yeah. Yes. Good. Well done to you all. Can I have a little word with you, please? Good night, ladies. Nice. Good night. job. Nice. Yeah. I definitely believe in my sister. She's learned what it takes to run a restaurant, and she's got the tools to bring this restaurant to greatness. Well done. Well done. Well done. You're courageous. You're bloody hardworking, and you're young. So you've got the energy now to take this place even further. I know what needs to change. I know what I have a lot of work sure. to do. But mark this as a significant day. This is no longer Charlie's restaurant, no longer Simon's, it's yours. This restaurant now is Tatiana's restaurant. Continue it. I okay? will. I'm going to make luck. you so proud. I can't wait to come back here. Yeah? You change lives, Gordon Ramsay. Come on. You really there. do. You changed yeah. my life. <laughs> this has not just been about the restaurant. This has been about everything in my life. You are like an angel. You have no idea. I love him. He's literally saved me. It's like a dream come true. <laughs> wow, when I first arrived here, Tatiana's priorities were all in the wrong order. She was fighting with her family, arguing with the staff, and more importantly, paid no attention to her kitchen. We made a massive turnaround here, and now Tatiana has her priorities all in the right place. But more importantly, she's in control of her business, and I've got every confidence that this little bistro will be a huge success. After Gordon left... I've got the two steaks going. OK, so I'm working the salad. Chef Jonathan maintained the high standards in the kitchen. Is there anything you want me to have the girls push right now? And immediately helped Tatiana launch the search for a new chef. Hi, how are you? And thanks to her transformation, not only is her business back on track... It's the first Charlie's staff meeting. <laughs> but so is her relationship with her family. I owe Chef Ramsay, like, everything. He has molded me into the business owner I need to be. When he comes back, he's going to be like, you've got it, Tatiana, yes. Hampton, Maryland, a proud community located just outside of Baltimore and home to Cafe Hunt, a restaurant whose name has special meaning to the local population. And what's your name, hon? Hon is a term of endearment. When you're being friendly, that's what you say. You say hon. Palmer people love the word hon. It's their word, you know. Here, hon. Opened by entrepreneur Denise Whiting in 1992, Cafe Hun quickly became a local landmark. Cafe Hun hugs you when you get here. It's just food, family, and fun. With her business doing well, Denise decided to capitalize on Baltimore's love affair with the word hun. She not only trademarked Cafe Hun, but the word Hun as well. Denise wanted to make money. She wanted to sell her mugs, her t-shirts, her little knick-knack things, and it backfired. Denise Whiting, the owner of Cafe Hun, and she said she would go after anyone that uses the word Hun. Denise had Baltimore behind her, and then she announced that she trademarked Hun, and that ticked off a big portion of Baltimore. This thing gets fun in this crazy way. They lodge a boycott on the restaurant. I mean, now I'm the villain. I'm the bad person. <sighs> Since the whole Han controversy, there has been a decline in business. It's, you know, dropped dramatically. Since all this has started, Denise has taken out her frustration on her staff. Oh, come on. Really? 
What is this supposed to be? She can be very harsh. I'm surprised that I have anyone left in the kitchen, to be honest with you. I want you to go downstairs, and I want you to give me a roll of paper towels that are perforated. There's one way to do it here, my way. What's this, Johnny? Why is it sitting there? Is this for something? When we have somebody that's not able to lead us, we're serving terrible food, and it sucks. Just a hard time. Do you want any of my gristle? No. <laughs> it's pretty much been hell. She's not helping in the kitchen. She doesn't even know what she's doing. She's going to run us down to the ground. And if Chef Ramsay doesn't come in, we're screwed. We really are. I'm done. I'll go broke at this rate. It's not fair, and it's not right, that these anonymous people that are out there trashing your business, and people are listening. Is this what I'm supposed to keep doing? Am I supposed to keep fighting for what I believe in, for what I've spent 20 years of my life just building? After learning of the Hun scandal, Chef Ramsay stops by a local radio station, hoping to get a better understanding as to why the community has turned its back on this restaurant. Today's best music, Mix 1065. Have the best day ever. We'll see you tomorrow morning. It's JoJo and Reagan. All right, that's a wrap. Morning, guys. Hey, hi. Hi. Hey, is this a good time? Yeah, absolutely. Sure. How are you? I'm Reagan. Reagan, nice good to see you. you. Hi, JoJo. JoJo, good to see you. Yep. Hi, I'm Sarah. Uh, Sarah, nice to see you good all. Good to meet you. Likewise, um, thanks for giving a couple of minutes of your valuable time. Um, I'm dying to find out in terms of a reputation, Cafe Hong. How is the food, Reagan? Oh, I, I've only eaten there two or three times, but the food is uh, is on the back burner. Why? When you talk about Cafe Hun, talk about Denise Whiting. She had trademarked the term Hun, which is a cultural icon in Baltimore. I mean, it's it's a, a term of endearment. Locally. Uh, locally. It's huge in this community. I mean, it just it represents friendliness, this welcoming. Hun is a word that was in our vocabulary in Baltimore wow. long before it was part of a restaurant yes. name. She went to a newspaper and said, I own it. I own the word. Locally, everyone's happy with the name of the restaurant, but they just weren't happy with her trying to own something that belonged to the town as opposed to her, I'm yeah. sure. She was threatening businesses with lawsuits. The lawsuits, I mean, it went that far. She had, had apparently, you know, thrown out some cease and desist letters to people who were using it. She demanded legal fees from somebody that was making tourist stuff with just the word Hun on it that didn't say Cafe Hun. Oh, dear. What's the feeling now? Has the business suffered on the back of that? The people who were most offended were the people in that immediate neighborhood. Yeah, I mean, she's almost become the anti-Hong. Yes. Wow. Well, thank you for the insight. Yeah, I'm here to help turn that place around. Let's turn it around. Yeah, but it's yeah. gonna be, let me say, we've got our work cut out <laughs> yeah. already. I haven't even been to the restaurant yet. I haven't even tasted the food yet. Yes. Yeah. Thank you. Good to see you. Thank you, Hong. Good to see you, too. Good to see you. Thank you, Good to see you. Likewise. Do you, do you know how to find the restaurant? Big pink flamingo, you can't miss it. So they get what, like it's a, a big pink flamingo on the outside. Like a full-size flamingo. flamingo. Oh, oh no. than full size. Uh, it's, it's... 60 feet or so? <laughs> oh, come on. <laughs> no, seriously. So look for a, a pink flamingo. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Take care. Rush it with a flamingo. Holy mackerel. Look at the size of that thing. Wow. Are you serious? Look at that. Wow, 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 wow. Hey, how are you? Hello. Hello, Chef Ramsay. How Welcome are you? Welcome to Cafe Hun. Very I'm happy Deborah to be here. Harris, manager. Deborah, nice to see you. What is that greasy? I just made a dessert. <laughs> Whipped cream. Whipped cream. Thank you for that. I'm but, sorry. Yeah, I was just so excited to see him. I didn't even think about washing the whipped cream off. How long have you been the manager? I have been here 13 years. Oh, wow. Wow, wow, wow. Well, you and I are going to talk later anyway. Yeah. Um, can, I, yes. can I meet the owner? Can I have a quick sure. word? Sure. Please, thank you. Then I need Denny's. They're waiting for you. They're waiting for me? Oh, yes. Oh, OK. Oh, this must be. Like you to meet Chef Ramsay? How are you? I'm <laughs> great. Nice to see you. Very nice to see you. Um, let's go somewhere quiet, shall we? Okay, and catch sure, up. And sure. Spend a couple of minutes. OK. Denise is going to not, she's not going to be herself. I believe she's going to pretend to be that perfect little darling. And I hope that Gordon Ramsay really can see through any facade she will put up. You look unhappy. Mm -hmm. Come on. I know. Why, I why know. are you upset? <laughs> I mean, business pretty much 
was half of what it was last year. I've taken everything I have and put it in here. I mean, I completely evaporated my small IRA that I had. I sold a house. Everything's gone into here. My last 10,000 went in two weeks ago. Oh my God. I just didn't know what to do anymore. So what happened? How did it start going badly? The problem is, I federally registered the Han as a as a trademark right. uh, years ago. Somebody picks up that I federally registered Han and starts saying that I have stolen something from the city of Baltimore. Right. The newspapers, radio, television, they belittled, demeaned. I have people scream at me from across the street, just horrible things. It's got that bad. Oh yeah. I mean, I was afraid for my life. You felt that threatened? Yeah. For yeah. your life? Yeah. What, death threats? Well, people wishing me dead. Why would they want to be so vicious to you? If they don't know me. I find it hard to believe that it's just because you registered the word hun and you've done nothing else. Nothing else. There's nothing else that managed to piss off anybody else. I'm, I'm not aware of anything else I've done. Did you not sue anyone? I never sued anybody. You didn't sue anybody? No. Did you threaten to sue anybody? No. I've done my homework before I got here. I did. I, you know See, what? you're not being fair now. Well, I did a cease and desist. You did. I did. Enforce a legal letter threatening to sue someone using that. Now, you've been very devious. Um, you know. I'm trying to get to the bottom of it, but I'm not going to extract blood out of the stone. I want to work with you, but make it very different for me when you don't tell me the truth. After being disappointed by Denise's cover-up of the PR problems at Cafe Hun, time for lunch. Gordon can now begin to focus on the food. Thank you. Hello. Hello, chef. And this is. Hi, I'm Janet. Janet, nice to see you, darling. How long have you been here? Almost 20 years. 20 years, wow. And this is... Hi, Lynn. Lynn, nice to see you, darling. How long have you been here? Eight years. Wow. Look at you. Lindsay. And this is... Amanda. Amanda, love the hair. Thank Beautiful. you. Beautiful. <laughs> nice to see you. I do this myself in the bathroom. Wow, wow, wow. The key is hairspray. Hairspray, hairspray, hairspray. Excellent. Enjoy your night. Thank you very much indeed. Wow. Ooh. Amanda? Sorry, darling. Yes, chef. Two seconds. Who is that on the front cover there? That's Denise. That, is that Denise? Yes, that's Denise looking wonderful. <laughs> looking wonderful? Wonderful. <laughs> oh, wonderful, sorry. <laughs> wow. Denise thinks that she's a rock star. And everything's just in your face, Denise. Um, right, what would you recommend? The Big Bay Club. It has our shrimp salad and crab mm -hmm. cake. Well, let's start off with that, shall we? Mm -hmm. yes. Okay. And I'll go for the much better the mom's meatball. Much better than mom's meatball. As in, best than mum's at home. Better than your own mom. Yeah. Wow. Okay, great. What else? I've got to go for the Balmer fish and chips. It's Balmer. 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 Bal Balmer. So it's something like Baltimore. Oh, so you're okay. saying it quickly. Balmer. Balmer. <laughs> it's Balmerese. 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 Oh, Balmerese, right. Say the word Balmer. Balmer. Yes. Thank you, Han. <laughs> Han. 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 Hun. 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 Short for honey. Honey. Love it. Yeah. Amazing. Thank you, Hun. Hun, hun, hun. Fish and chips, Okay. Now it's in the kitchen, Sam. Okay, and that's for Chef. All right, I'll stop. All right, we can go on the big bag. You know, I used to just say, you know, serve good food and the people will come. This is what it should always taste like. This is perfect. Well, we continue to serve good food, but the people don't come. Big bag? Is that my big bag? Mm -hmm. Yes. Are you taking that or you want me to take it? Go ahead. Tower of Seafood. Holy mackerel. Big Bay Club. What's in there? This is a layer of shrimp salad, mm -hmm. a layer of warm crab cake, mm -hmm. bacon, and lettuce and tomato. Thank you. How the hell do you start eating sandwich this wide? I mean, honestly, squash a little down. I surrender. I have to break it down. Deconstructed. Mm, wow, the crab, it's delicious. It's a very pleasant surprise, let me tell you. Got this nice layer of crab, 
and then these stone cold shrimp underneath. Horrible. Amanda? Gross. This boat here, I mean, they taste like they're a week old. Do you mind? God, they're ghastly. Taste of the fridge. Mm, it does have a weird appetite. That's, that's horrible, that half taste. Mm -hmm. It almost tastes like they're tainted. Yeah. That's a mess. I'll leave that one, darling. The chef. They said the, uh, they said the shrimp tastes, that they had like a weird aftertaste to it. Like, almost tastes like really? the refrigerator. What's the matter? Hmm. He said they taste like they're old. A lot of the menu items are crap. It's Denise's recipes. It's the way she wants it done. I don't, I don't understand. This is perfect. Denise never thinks she's wrong. This is perfect. And that's her biggest downfall. Can you got fries for me? Crispy, please? Is it a little dark? Nope. Denise? Is it a little dark? It's good enough. Are we happy with this? I'm taking this, Denise. Let's take it. Denise does what Denise wants to do. And she won't listen to me. She won't listen to anyone else. No, I should have gone out like that. It's aggravating. Mm. English style fish and chips. Wow, English style. Yeah. Holy mackerel. House cut fries from fresh potatoes. And what kind of fish is it? Uh, codfish. Codfish. Mm -hmm. Wow. Is it me or is everything just greasy? <sighs> no? Yeah. OK, great. Thank you, Diane. Thank you. <clears throat> Horrible. Fries are not even crispy, they're just full of fat. All the batter's soggy. It doesn't even stick to the fish. It's dreadful. What a shame. Amanda? It's dry. Fish is dry? Well, the whole batter just sort of it's almost like peels away from it. Those fries, what a shame. You don't like the fries? Well, it's just all soggy. Look at my fingers. Yeah. When you have fish and chips. And the tastiest thing on the plate is the tartar sauce. It's a big disappointment. I love fish and chips. What a shame. Wow. Sorry, Chef. The cooks are doing the best that they can with the way they've been told to do things. So it's Nisa's fault. What's wrong? Greasy fish, fry, the batter's just falling off of it. And instead, the fries, they were mushy. Really? That's weird. And he squeezed it, and all this like grease was all over his hand. French fries. You know, you get some potatoes that are one way and some potatoes are another way, and I'm having a problem with the consistency of the potatoes. I mean, it's just making me crazy. Right. Do you have the meat love? Coming up. Like now. Thanks, Dustin. Yeah. <laughs> Jeez. And this one is? And the meatloaf. Thank you. Much better than mom's meatloaf. That is a very bold statement. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks, Chef. It's like a flamingo turd just landed on my plate. Rocky's raw. That's dreadful. What a shame. Damn. Chef? Damn, that was disappointing. It's the mm -hmm. actual flavour um, of the meatloaf. Meat yeah. And the uh, demi glace is just mm -hmm. so thick. Salty. Sometimes it can be runny. Today it's actually thick. Well, it's just marred everything like a big, thick varnish that just tastes yeah. like nothing. Whose recipe is this? Um, I believe it's Denise's. Denise's, yeah. Mm -hmm. Better than mum's meat, though. Thank God my mum's not joining me for lunch today. <laughs> Thanks, darling. Yes, sir. Wow. And will you ask someone to taste that broccoli? The broccoli's soft. I will, yes. And the yes, mesh chef. is cold. Yes, chef. OK, he wants you to try the broccoli. So the broccoli is almost raw. <laughs> the mash is cold, and the demi-glaze is too thick. And okay. the meatloaf is bland. OK. Every time he had a comment or a criticism, it's pretty ridiculous. I've been here for 20 years. I had to have done something right. Maybe he's not the answer. Are we done? Um, I go through the kitchen. Let's go and say hello and meet everybody. Hi, guys. Hello. Oh, hello, Chef Lindsay. Uh, this is Greg. Greg, I'm Tisha. You work under Denise. Yes. Do you think she's going to listen to anything he says? I hope so. I don't think she will. She might snap, freak out like the <laughs> yeah. wicked witch. This is a comfort food restaurant, right? Yes. And when I think of comfort food, I think of meatloaf and other excitement. That's bland. And the Big Bay seafood sandwich, crab, delicious. But underneath, you've got these stone cold shrimp. It's horrible aftertaste. Fish and chips, the fish is overcooked. The batter is just falling off it. And you hand cut those fries. Yes. They're cooked dreadfully. Do you season them and taste them before they go out? We do not season the fries. You don't season fries? No, we don't. Is this you? Yeah. 
you told them they can't season the fry? Fast food joints season fries, for God's sake. Does no one care? I mean, there's not much to say, you know. It's the, what we have. It's the menu that we have laid out, and it's the you recipes. Do better. We can. Do you enjoy cooking this? I don't enjoy cooking our menu food, personally. It's just dull. I mean, when we do try to change things, you know, it's always, oh, I don't like it like this, you know, we... Who like, doesn't like it? Denise. So you're telling me you can do better than what's on the menu? What? I thought the problems were on the outside. You've got them on the inside and the outside. Combine both, and I'm amazed you're still open. I know that we have a good product, and I'm not going to let anybody get in my way, including Chef Ramsay. After discovering that Denise's food might be as bad as Cafe Hun's PR... Fucking flamingo. Chef Ramsay is anxious to see how the kitchen handles a busy dining room. Do this. How are you all tonight? Word has spread that Chef Ramsay is in Baltimore, and the dining room is full for the first time in a year. You got fish and chips working? And the kitchen is now dealing with a flood of orders. Got asparagus for that, and I can get it out of your hair. Yeah. Right. Let's start falling to the table. Let's get there. Tea. All right, can you fix that asparagus so it's all nice and neat? You know, I got three steaks sitting here. I really don't care, Greg. When Denise comes in in her chef clothes, it's like having a hurricane in there. She just goes hectic and, you know, you know, oh, I want this done now, I want it done this way. All right, I want everybody's attention. Can I have everybody's attention? Debbie, I need your attention. Hello? Yes. This is asparagus, all right? I'm tired of seeing the asparagus dumped in a bin all different kinds of ways. You know, you start with the small things. We always get little lessons from Denise, and it's frustrating because you just can't stop. Then everything backs up, and it's, it's, it just causes a lot of problems. You cut off the ends, oh and you blanch them. You hold the asparagus and see where they break at so you know where to cut them. That's how it's OK. Them. All right. Ray, table one, been waiting a long time. I really, really appreciate it. Everybody's been waiting a long time. I don't have time to stand around and watch her do this when I have other you know, jobs to do. I feel like I'm on the Titanic. I need that crab to bump for 22. Take this to 57. Despite Denise slowing down her kitchen with an asparagus lesson. All right, I'm taking the app for 17. And that plate is very hot. And then your wings will be right out. Some of the dishes still manage to make their way out to the diners. There's a pool of grease underneath the chicken. Cafeteria would be the way I would describe it. <laughs> there is like a hair. I can't believe there's a hair. The turkey's just like crumbling apart. It doesn't really taste at all. What's wrong with that? Overcooked, and they said that looked like mush. What is that? Turkey for stuffing. They did not like this. I'm getting something oh else. Oh, my God. All right, this turkey, we're not serving it anymore. 86 the turkey. Any turkey on the board, 86 the turkey. I thought I was medium, didn't I? Yes, you did. OK, I'll get it medium. Table five wanted a medium steak. What's wrong? It's a well. Five wooden medium, this is well. No medium, Mitch. Give me those steaks. I don't want to use those steaks. Give me. Fuck it, give we me, don't have table 52. Give me all those steaks. Put them in there. Please alert all servers that we have no steaks. None what? of the orders I have no steaks for. Are you serious? Yes. Took the ones we had, threw them out. Threw them out. All this? He threw them all out. That's, that's the whole table. Denise threw them out. There's nothing I can do. Whole table 52. Denise yeah. threw them out. This is something that Denise normally does, 86 and things. 86 biscuits, you guys. They don't like it. 86 the pot pie. 86 the catfish. Instead of fixing an entree, in the moment, she pulls the entire food item from service. 86 Rare. the steak. We don't have steak, OK? We don't have to redo everything. Oh, yes. my god. This shit clean. Fuck me. I swear to god. You guys, 86 the french fries. Oh my god. Wow. Fish and chips without the chips. We need to find out about all the tables that have french fries on their tickets that are not getting french fries. We are out of fries for the fish and chips. What would you like? Do you want sweet chips? Yeah. 86 the sweet fries. 86 sweet fries. Oh my god. We have nothing to serve after 86 every menu item. 
die. Why are we 86 in the sweet fries? 86 sweet potato fries, we got the motherfuckers cooking. I don't get it. I'm just, I'm, I'm in pain here. Thank you. Oh, my God. OK, as my nightmare continues, we're out of sweet potato fries. Out of sweet potato fries? Yeah. Denise kept pulling stuff. And I'd have to walk to the table and tell him he, the food's not there. And I can only apologize so many times to somebody. I'm embarrassed by it. You want a hug? Oh, no. Oh. Oh. As the menu items keep dwindling... Folks, we're out of pot pie. I'll take it off your check, honey. I apologize. The diner's patience is dwindling as well. What about these? They left. They left? I've never seen anything like this. I've never seen anything no. so dysfunctional. I've never seen a kitchen work so backwards. You can't keep customers waiting an hour for food and then 86 it. Find out the total amount that we can't I will, you, please? I will. Thank yes. you. Oh, Jesus. Uh, what the fuck was all that about? It's a ship channel. Honestly? Yeah. And is she always like that? Yes. How do you concentrate like that you, in service? You can't. I mean, you really can't. Why I mean, was she 86 and everything in the middle of I, service? I could not tell you. I've got 601 in voids and 150 almost in discounts. So that's $750 total. Wow. Yeah. I mean, that is ridiculous. It is. Thank you, guys. Thanks, Jeff. Crazy. Gordon Ramsay has got to get through her thick skull. If she doesn't take his advice, okay. we're not going to make it. I don't know where to start. I mean, I just, yeah, I, I, that was a disaster. Do you know, we comped $800 worth of food. OK. You stop the team in the middle of service and show them how to put asparagus on the plate. We're focusing in all the wrong areas. How can you let it go this far? How can and somehow you... I got, I got derailed. If I can simplify the menu down to something that's really manageable and we just do wonderfully simple, delicious comfort food. Okay, listen, so, I'm going to stop you there, because uh, I, uh, you're confusing me. Before you can talk about anything else, you've got to get the basics, right? You've got to get the core, the foundation, because I think you've lost the plot. Okay. You need to sit down and have a think. Because what this restaurant hasn't got is a clear direction. And restaurants run from the top. It starts from the top. And when the leader's gone, the restaurant's gone. I, I, I don't know where to start. I'm sorry. Jeez. Can we get these mats out of here? Clearly, Denise is in denial about how she mismanages the restaurant. Take a seat, please. So this morning, Chef Ramsay decides to pull together a staff meeting before she arrives. OK. Right, that was a tough one yesterday, yes? Yes. yes. yes chef. And the only way we are ever going to move forward is if we get out in the open. What's bothering you in the way that Denise is running the restaurant? Basically, when she's not here, it runs quite smooth. But when she comes in... The whole morale of the uh, restaurant just drops. She doesn't even have to say anything, but we know something's going to happen. We're afraid of what she's going to do. It's awful how she talks to the people. She goes up to one of the girls and tells them they're stupid, or she gets up to my face, tell her to fix her hair. Put a flower in your hair. That's why the customers aren't coming in, because you want to put a flower in your hair. She's getting too carried away. She focuses on a lot of the superficial things. She micromanages. It's insane. I mean, really insane. Last night, she went 86 crazy, right? Yeah. yeah. Nearly a dozen items. 86 the fish and chips, uh, 86 the beef. Is this normal? Yes. She doesn't take responsibility for anything. So why aren't we standing up to her? We're all afraid to tell her anything she negative. Knows. She'll fire them. She'll fire them. Oh, she'll yeah. fire them? She told a couple of us, if you say negative things, I don't need you with me. I appreciate your honesty. However, you need to get that message across to Denise. You've got to start standing up for what's right. And I want you all to do that. Right now. Oh, oh my god. We're all going to get fired right now. This morning, Chef Ramsay has heard an array of grievances about Denise. She's getting too carried away. We're all afraid to tell her anything negative. 
He knows full well that for this restaurant to move forward, the staff needs to come clean with their boss. Oh my God. Denise is coming. We're all going to get fired right now. Come over, please. Uh, right. I saw a lot yesterday, and I wanted to catch up with the team. And some of the crap they've had to endure and tolerate is actually quite horrific. I'm amazed that they're still here. I'm now going to ask them to open up and be honest with you. I didn't think we were going to have to tell her to her face what we thought. Debbie, please. Denise, you, um, you're a rude bitch. And I'm tired of it. I feel like I don't even know you anymore. You're just too mean with the, with the employees. You're talking yeah. to them like shit. Denise, you're the negative in the restaurant. You make me feel like I'm not good enough. Denise, I feel very unappreciated. I do anything you ask me, and you come in and scream at me. What is going on? Do you not trust me? Oh, Janet, I trust you. How do I know this? Unless you tell me. Wow. Thank you, Donnie. Greg, please. Terrible you're coming in, you're screaming, you're a hindrance on the lawn, you're a hindrance, you know, in the prep. You're controlling everything, and yet you've got a brigade front and back of house that are loyal and hardworking and can get the job done. Denise, your ego is huge, and you think because you're Denise Whiting, you can do anything. You have to stop feeling sorry for yourself that nobody likes you. We've already established that. People don't like you. <sighs> it is tough love, but this is so important. Debbie, what's the matter? Um, I'm just afraid about this place going out, out of business. After all I've put them through, I'm just so humbled and so grateful that they're still with me. To lose this business would be for me to lose my soul and everything that everybody does here. I love each and every one of you. I've just been off. And I know that. I know I've come into the kitchen and I've been difficult. I'm sorry that I've been a bit overbearing. I'm going to step back and let everybody do what they do so well. And I can only say that this is the beginning of a new day. She seems sincere now, but I'm a little doubtful about what she's gonna do as far as changing. Very doubtful in a way. Sad to say. Thank you. Now that Denise has recognized the morale problems of her restaurant. Hi, ladies. Chef Ramsey knows that he needs her to fully understand why the community continues to be upset with her. I put together a select group of people that I'd like you to hear from. OK. OK? Please, jump in the car. Headsets on. Listen carefully, and I'll come back. Oh, my god, these people, they're going to crucify me. I'm going to be thrown to the wolves. Now, there's been some issues and some turmoil, and I would like to take this moment for you to help me to understand why Kathy Hun and its owner Denise have angered this community. Who would like to go first? What she really tried to do was appropriate an identity. It's like going to Australia and trademarking mate or y'all in the South. She's acting like a bully. Why is she a bully? Anybody who would like to use the word is at risk of receiving a cease and desist order. Uh, from her lawyers that says, change your name or else. And I have a website called Welcome to Baltimore Hun. And I see some desist letter that she sent. Wow, I mean, that's 
pretty severe. It transcends the restaurant industry. She had gone to the Maryland Transit Administration for their Hun ad campaign and forced them to give her creative control. Basically, the Maryland state government has to go to Denise Whiting for her approval. Do you remember what that? Legally, she has the standing, but she's not in the right. No. And that's what people recognize. Yeah. It's just about money for her. It's not about Hamden. It's not about anything. It's just money. She pushes everyone around. She's focused on Denise Whiting. And if you don't like it, you're going to be sorry. I have seen her nasty. She's made a mockery of who we are and then tried to profit from it, and I think that's very egregious. The damage is done. All the citizens of Baltimore were the ones that stopped going. They are not going to go use that restaurant. No way, ever. What would it take for this community to embrace Cafe Hun again? She has to walk away from the, tra the trademark. She has to abandon it. <laughs> she has a law claim to it, Get say it, it was a mistake. She does not own it. It doesn't belong to anybody. Right. I'm very grateful for your insight. Thank you so much for coming. I appreciate Thank it. You. Thank you. How do you feel about what they said? It was a... Uh, eye opener? Yeah. I didn't get it before. I was just so angry at all the things that were happening and didn't know how to handle them, and I was in denial. I get it now. That's hard in there. There's so much hate. What? Directed in, in, in my direction, there but was you no... did go after a few people. You did send letters where they were absolutely freaking out to sort of stand up against. But when you threaten people, or they feel threatened, they're going to revolt. Do you realise you've made a mistake? Yes. You have to do something. You have to take responsibility and make a gesture. Do you agree? I absolutely agree. You're not just saying that because I'm here. Oh, God, no. You know, yeah, you know, we got a big issue here, and, 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 and it's not me you have to convince, it's the city of Baltimore. Everything in my life has been a disaster in the last several months, and I'm the only one that can change that. However, I don't, I don't really know what I'll do. It appears as though Denise has seen the error of her ways, and so Chef Ramsay decides to go ahead with the renovation of Cafe Hunt. Morning, ladies. Good morning. morning. Chef. Nice to see you. Today is the beginning of a new era. Are you ready to see your new restaurant? Yes. 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 Welcome to New Cafe Hunt. Jump in, please. Oh my God, that is so oh gorgeous. Look at this beauty. Oh, oh my goodness. <laughs> Look at this. Oh my God. I always wanted the wall pink. I always wanted boxes for the teapots. <laughs> always, always. Gorgeous. Gone are those hideous colors. Now we have a consistent, bright vibrance in the local restaurant. <sighs> Let's look at the huge, stunning artwork. That is a tribute to Hun. Glamorous, gorgeous, and something that belongs to the restaurant. Let's get that right. I love it. It's simple, it's elegant, and it's clean. Everything just kind of blends together so perfectly. I really feel like we have a future in Hamden. Can't help but love it. <laughs> Welcome to the Flamingo Room. Wow. <laughs> Oh is this a party room or what? Look at the chandelier. What do you think? <laughs> Come on. Oh, we love it. I am so happy. It's like the sun came up over the Cafe Hun on a gorgeous day. It's going to be better. It's going to be Thank better you. than it's Thank been. Thank you. Thank you. With everyone clearly overjoyed about the physical changes to the restaurant. Take a little line up, have a look at this amazing food. <laughs> Chef Ramsay is now ready to unveil the revamped menu. OK, let's start off from the top, shall we? Hunt's chili, beef, tomatoes, onions, peppers, cheese, served with some cornbread. Cornbread. Traditional and classic. Hun's hot crab dip. This one's done with Maryland crab. It's gorgeous. Next to that, you've got the mini shrimp and crab rolls. Delicious. And the entrees, obviously the Maryland crab cake. This one's going to fly out the door. Thank you. Oh, yes. I love you for that. Next to that, classic fish and chips. Crispy, delicious. There is no soggy batter there, let me tell you. Absolutely beautiful. Amazing. Next to that, you got a delicious meatloaf wrapped in bacon, so with mashed potatoes, green beans, and obviously ketchup. Oh, that's and beautiful. Delicious. 
yummy. Better is so much better. Get a knife and fork and dig in, dig in, dig in. Amen. Oh my god. Mmm. That's delicious. Really good. This is so perfect. This is better than I thought it could ever be. We could never have done this on our own. Fries are great. Mm -hmm. Don't you feel better? That's yeah. all streamlined. We're serving a brand new menu. It's just really simpler, but it's better food and it looks better. So we're all psyched to serve it. It's gonna be fun. Oh my god. Isn't that awesome? Mm -hmm. I'm having a mouth party. <laughs> <laughs> Now that the restaurant and menu have been vastly improved, Chef Ramsey knows that it is critical that Denise reach out to the community, and so he has made arrangements for her to do just that. This is an amazing opportunity. We're about to go live. You ready? I'm ready. Let's go. Good right. luck. You may or may not have known, Gordon Ramsay's been filming here in town over the weekend. We've heard that he's bringing Denise Whiting, the owner of Cafe Hun, with him, and that they're gonna make an announcement of some sort on our show, and they just walked into the studio. Hello. Good morning. Hello, Gordon, how are you? Very well, indeed. thank you. It's been a busy couple of days for you, we're sure. Very busy. Uh, yeah, we've uh, yeah, we've gone to hell and back. It's been a tough week. I'm gonna hand you over to Denise. She's obviously very excited to be here. I just wouldn't say. Trademarking the word is not only almost killed me, but has just about killed the business. I didn't understand the whole culture and how passionate everybody was about, you know, Hun is in our hearts, and now I get it. I was just doing what business people do, and it was a misstep. I am so sorry for the animosity and the hatred and everything that trademarking a word, just a word, has done. Please forgive me. That must have taken a lot of courage to, to say that. But you never said you were going to give the trademark back. Is that what you're doing? You mean actually physically handing over the trademark? Yeah, yeah. Will you be handing it back? Do I want to do this? Maybe I don't. After alienating the entire city of Baltimore, Denise has an opportunity to make amends. You never said you were going to give the trademark back. Is that what you're doing? You mean actually physically handing over the trademark? Yeah, yeah. Will you be handing it back? Yes. Wow. This is amazing. I am taking that piece of paper that says it's registered. I'll get it from my attorney. I'll take it off the register. I can do that. That's that's <laughs> that's kind of stunning. This is for real. It was never mine to have in the first place. It's just a word. It's just wonderful to have this opportunity to be here to get. <sighs> I get a second chance. Please forgive me um, for everything that I've done. Denise, I got to be honest with you. I wasn't on your side over the last year. I'm on your side now. Thank you guys. Thank you, Gordon, from the bottom of my heart. Thank you so much. This is an incredible opportunity that I've been handed, and I'm not going to take it for granted. All right, well, thank both of you for coming in this morning. I appreciate it. I appreciate your time. Thank you so much. Marie is coming up next. It's 10 o'clock. Immediately following Denise's announcement on the radio, Chef Ramsay arranged for a press conference to make sure that everyone in Baltimore understands that Denise is giving up the trademark of the word hunt. I didn't mean to, to steal something or to take something, and I apologize. For the remainder of his stay, Gordon and his team got in the trenches with Chef Greg and his staff. Work as a team, work as a team. Where he implemented a new system. For me, it doesn't even look hot enough. Stone cold, come on, back in. And as Cafe Hun became a fun place to work at once again. Guys, you're doing a great job. You're doing awesome. John, thank you, Dottie, beautiful. The people of Baltimore returned. I appreciate your saying thank you, and I really want you to do well. And the business is clearly headed in a positive direction. It's so fantastic. It's a lot better than the old stuff. This thing is all the champion. Touchdown! <laughs> Chef Ramsay took a lost owner and put her back on the road to success. And nobody realizes that more than Denise Whiting. With all the odds stacked against you, you pulled it off. <laughs> I feel amazing. I've been given a gift, a great gift, and an amazing opportunity, and I will be 
forever grateful. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I have a bloody you. tough thank week. You. I have my life back. I have my restaurant back. Thank you, Gordon Ramsay. Thank you for this opportunity. Thank you, everybody. Bye. 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 See ya. Thank you, guys. Wow. Good night, hon.